many of you have probably heard the name Pro Bono PD, most likely for his work on app images, which whilst not being the main way we distribute applications on Linux, is absolutely important and is often mentioned in the same context as flat packs and snaps. But you may also know the name for a Wayland related thing. Think twice before abandoning Xorg, Wayland breaks everything, often just called Boycott Wayland. For example, Wayland breaks screen recording. This is not true and hasn't been true for years. Now there are certain applications that don't support the solution, that being Pipewire and Portals, and he even acknowledges Pipewire and Portals. This is known to be a Red Hat slash Flatpak centric, Gnome centric, perhaps worked with other desktops. No, it works with every desktop because Portals are a requirement for Wayland nowadays. Wayland breaks screen sharing applications. Once again, no, we have a solution nowadays. It is Portal and Pipewire. It is up to the applications to update to support this solution. As a stopgap, there is also X Wayland Video Bridge that basically fakes a solution that fixes every application. Wayland breaks app images that don't ship a special Wayland QT plugin. That plugin being the plugin that adds Wayland support. Wayland breaks Redshift. Technically, yes but every compositor base now has an alternative available. Wayland breaks global hotkeys. Yes, but there is a portal available, it just needs to be supported by the applications. Also, some compositors like Hyperland and KDE do have a solution currently available. Wayland does not work for XFCE. It does, they are literally in the process of developing it. Wayland complicates server-side window decorations. Wrong. Gnome complicates server-side window decorations Everybody else supports the protocol. Wayland breaks window managers. Translate that to Wayland breaks tools that are made to configure Xorg, not made to configure Wayland. This one I'll give you, that's actually true. Things like WL Roots do make things easier than writing everything entirely from scratch, but it's a lot more complex than just using Xorg. Wayland breaks screensavers. No, it breaks X screensaver, a tool made to work on Xorg. Screensavers are entirely possible. No one wants to make them. Wayland breaks DRM leasing. No. Gnome breaks DRM leasing. Everybody else supports the protocol. Look, I don't hate the Gnome devs. Of the ones I've spoken to, they're great people. But this is a common trend. But as of late, it seems like Probono is getting a little bit bored of just complaining about the problems. He's been showing up in a couple of Wayland Protocol discussions and trying to give his peace and trying to make things better, and that's awesome, and I wish more people did that. And now, we have a new project from Probono. That being Wayland X11 Compat Protocols. It's a mess of a name, the name is working and they're possibly going to change it. But this is a repo for the missing Wayland protocols for features that are available in X11 but are denied by the official Wayland protocols. This is a third party protocol repo trying to address the gaps in Wayland. This is a namespace for Wayland protocols governed outside the existing Wayland projects. It is not expected that all Wayland compositors will implement these protocols, but most likely some will. I'm sure they I'm sure they will. Whenever people ask for something that works in X11, but not in Wayland, we add it here. Ideally in a way that makes it trivially easy for people to port existing X11 applications to the X11 Compat Wayland protocols. The only requirement for a protocol to be added to this namespace is functionality that works in X11, but does not work in Wayland due to a Wayland policy decision. The protocols must not draw in additional dependencies besides the Wayland compositor itself, such as Dbus, <laughs> Pipewire, and Portals. Things that you fundamentally need on a modern Linux system. Good luck getting rid of Dbus, and Pipewire and Portals are the solution to so many problems on Wayland and flat packs and are basically just going to be a requirement going forward and every distro that you actually want to use just installs them. This is like calling bash or glibc or the Linux kernel an additional requirement. Technically it is, but you're gonna have it anyway. If done successfully, these protocols are going to allow applications and desktop environments and abstractions like libxfc for windowing, which we'll check out in just a moment, to do what they can do in X11 
unencumbered, and without additional software besides the Wayland Compositor, such as Pipewire, Portals, Desktop Files, etc. Now, he does have a reason to have an issue with Desktop Files. That is related to app images, and oftentimes when you install an app image, you don't also go and install a Desktop File as well. So... There are certain things like icons which currently don't behave correctly. Now this final bit here used to say something different. Instead what it said is because the windowing system is not a sandbox, an application should be allowed to do whatever they want to do. Which, you know, is a take to have. I like the idea of permission systems, and I like that on Linux desktop we are moving towards them. This, I feel, is ultimately a good thing. It is a bit rough in the meantime while things aren't as convenient as they could be, but when we get to the eventual goal, this is going to be a massive security improvement. Anyway, this is libxfce for windowing. It's basically a generic abstraction to do all of the XFCE windowing stuff without worrying about whether it's on Xorg or Wayland. You just write the code in the context of XFCE, and it should just do the things that it should be doing. The problem is it's fully supported on X11, but Wayland is currently partially supported through various Wayland protocol extensions. However, the full range of operations available on X11 is not available on Wayland due to missing features in these protocol extensions. It doesn't define what features are actually missing and what they would like to see. That would be really nice to have as just a list here to indicate what you actually want. So, you know, if someone checks this out and like, oh, Maybe we do need a protocol for that. That would be a good thing to see. Now, as it currently stands, none of these protocols actually exist. The repo is completely empty. It's got the directory structure, and that's pretty much it. Keep in mind, this was just made a couple of days ago, so things like that will be added over time. Unless this gets completely abandoned, which, I don't know, could certainly happen. So, the first protocol is capped to the screen without pipewire, portals, etc. There was a Wayland protocol being worked on. It got abandoned because the pipewire and portal solution is just better. You want to have an application capturing a screen be permission controlled. You don't want random applications to be able to do this. And pipewire is more than just merging your audio systems together and capturing your screen. It is going to be fundamental to the way we handle media going into the future. So there is some fun stuff being worked on with virtual webcams. Right now, dealing with virtual webcams is a nightmare. Only one process can have a webcam at once. It's stupid, there is a kernel module to deal with this, and it shouldn't be like this. With Pipeware, though, you can just send the video into as many places you need using the existing patch bay technology we already have. This is super cool and is going to completely change the way we handle video. Following this, set global keyboard shortcuts without portals, etc. This goes back to what I was saying before. You don't want applications to be able to blindly read your keyboard. I can write a keylogger in Python for Xorg in less than 10 lines of code. Because any application can just read the keyboard, and all you need to do is just write those keys out to a file, and you're done. There is no permission control, it just lets you do it. That's a problem, and you want to be able to control what applications can read your keyboard. The problem is there hasn't been a solution for this. There are compositors like Hyperland and KDE that do have temporary solutions. But a better solution is a portal that you can say, I want this application to be able to read these keys, I don't want this one, I want this one to be able to read this subset of keys, so on and so forth. Get the process ID and other vital information like in Xprop. Now Xprop is an application that many of you probably never interact with, but this will tell you the general properties of a window. Things like the window class, the window name, and all of these other bits of information which in certain contexts can be incredibly useful. Now the issue isn't that you can't get this information on Wayland. All the information is still there, at least the equivalent information that also exists on Wayland. The problem is different compositor bases handle this in a different way. I don't know if you need a protocol to resolve that, or just an application that abstracts away the differences between the compositor bases. Kill other applications like Xkill. Now, if you've used a Wayland compositor, you would know that you can still kill applications. It's very easy to do. 
I think what he's asking for is once again a generic solution that abstracts away the differences between the compositor, because different compositors are going to kill applications in a different way. That probably should exist, I don't know of one. Does it need a protocol though? Probably not. Set arbitrary window icons with no need for desktop files. This is another protocol by Matthias Klump. Not related to the multi-window stuff, but also by Matthias. So the issue right now is on X11, applications can just set a window icon whenever they want to. On Wayland, that's not a thing. And the only icon comes from the desktop file, which is a problem for the app images because you probably don't have a desktop file. Also, it's a problem with multi-window applications if you want to have a different icon for each of the different windows because you'll need to have dynamically loaded desktop files and other dumb things like this, which right now cannot be done. This isn't something that has been rejected. This is still in active discussion. This is a protocol that was started three days ago. Like, nothing has been decided yet, so it's entirely possible we get to a solution that doesn't rely on desktop files. It's very possible we will though, in which case, you're gonna just need a desktop file which most other applications are using anyway. Set key value combinations on Windows, X11 atoms. Now this is something that is actually missing and I don't believe there has been a protocol that's attempted to address this. If there has been, I've certainly not seen it. An X11 atom is basically a way to assign generic data to a window in a key value pair. The problem is, do you actually need X11 atoms? Or do you have some very specialized use cases that a more specialized protocol would be a lot better of an idea for? I have a feeling it might be the latter. Atoms aren't something that are commonly discussed, and I can't imagine that many applications heavily use them. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know, and a protocol would be useful. But I haven't seen anyone try to address the problem, so I can't imagine it's really that important to address. Arbitrarily position windows. Now, if you've seen my prior videos, you know exactly who this is taking us to. Once again, Matthias Klump. This specifically links to the original protocol, EXT Placement, where basically it was replicating the X11 system, where the protocol lets you set the monitor to spawn the window on, and the position on the monitor. So absolute positioning. Whilst this would be the easiest thing to implement, there might be a better way to handle this. That being 264, which is the second version of the placement protocol. This is all about creating basically virtual monitors that applications can position themselves absolutely within. This allows you to do things like window clusters where you can move the entire cluster around at once and gives the compositor the ability to set specific areas of the screen where you can't place windows on. Like, this I think is a massive improvement over just copying what X11 is doing. The problem is right now nothing's been implemented, so it's all still up in the air. This new protocol is from two weeks ago though, so it's still fairly early on in discussions, and I hope that one of these gets implemented. Drag and drop between applications without portals. I've talked about portals enough times already. I'm not doing it again. I've given my piece. Portals are basically a requirement for using Wayland. Get over it. As it currently stands, there are two open issues. The first one being inviting potentially injured people to the repo. My favorite addition here being Zimian, who is Matthias Klump, who is incredibly busy with his PhD work, and just getting him on the podcast was an absolute nightmare. I kinda doubt he'll show up in this repo, especially when he's trying really hard to fix the problem upstream. The place where the problem getting fixed is actually going to make a difference. The other one I find really amusing, proprietary drivers. One thing x Wayland doesn't solve is proprietary drivers. It never planned to. In my case, I have an AS Speed AS2500 video card. Its driver is now only maintained on Windows, on Linux, and FreeBSD. It's a full user space driver consisting of a shared object blob for Xorg named AST underscore DRV.SO that can be used with no mode set and allow playing DRM videos. The removal of the support of Xorg for major desktop environments from Fedora leave getting a black screen as the only option or use a lightweight desktop environment that doesn't let you configure things like printers or the system's time zone. 
you can do this from the terminal. I'm not sure what you're talking about. And you can definitely configure printers from the terminal as well. So those are very solvable problems. But you probably have no idea what an AS Speed AS2500 video card is. That's because it's not a desktop chip. That's a server chip. That is a server chip that is intended to be used in a headless environment. The only video output is VGA that is basically there for the use of diagnostics. So look, I wish the repo the best of luck. I don't think it's going to have that much of an impact. Maybe it will. Maybe someone decides, oh, I'm just going to implement a bunch of these protocols for some reason or another. But I think the way you really make changes on Wayland is doing things upstream, getting everybody to implement them, that's where things really change. Or creating a compositor base like WL Roots, adding some additional protocols there, and then having people build off your compositor base. Because making a protocol by itself is pretty easy. It's just an XML file, anybody can do that. But it's not until it's actually implemented in the real world do you actually see some level of change. But what do you guys think? Do you think the repo is a good idea? Do you think things should just be done upstream? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, and Libero pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Wayland Shill out.